so now we got that understanding so now we go to number two of the ways that the modern hebrew women have hatred for hebrew men it says uh they don't like the concept of yahweh and yahshua getting the honor and praise see modern women of today you know they not they not used to men just focusing on yahweh and yahshua all the time right they they mainly getting all the attention like the uh, hebrew women of today they mainly are used to getting all the attention on social media they are mainly used to getting all the praise so they know the hebrew men that's in the truth they're not going to what give those wicked sisters the praise so they say hey i know i'm not living right but these men are not focusing on me they focus on yahweh's righteousness so that's what the mindset of the hebrew women are you know in modern day times they know the hebrew man is not going to be focused on them like that so they go after the wicked men of the world because that's how they're going to get their praise so that's why you have a lot of falling out in relationships between the hebrew man that's in the truth right and a woman that's not in the truth it's a falling out okay because the hebrew man in general supposed to be focused on yahweh and yahshua ways right okay they probably focus on their ways and how to live right according to their standards right not according to the world america standards see our modern hebrew women they're trying to live according to the world standards of living turning up having a good time you know not focusing on yahweh's righteousness so that's where the conflict comes in at so we're going to go to the book of proverbs chapter 18 verse 22 to get the understanding that it's hard to find um a good woman these days for the hebrew man that's in the truth and there's reasons why this is why proverbs chapter 18 verse 22 it says whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtain a favor of yahweh so it's hard to find a wife that's why i said whoso find and it say everyone find of a wife <laughs> you know what i'm saying it said whoso find of a wife talking about wife of understanding that's what it's saying okay anybody can just in general just get married today but we're talking about a wife with understanding of yahweh's righteousness that's why it's going to become a good thing because you got a wife of yahweh's mind and yahshua's mind because she's obedient to yahweh's laws okay but modern hebrew women don't want to keep yahweh's laws and this is how you obtain a favor of yahweh because why you got your woman that's in the truth you hebrew men you got a woman in the truth that's how you're gonna obtain favor of yahweh because you didn't get this woman based off lust you got this woman based on the the you got this woman on the basis of her repenting as a hebrew woman her trying to learn the ways of how to be a hebrew woman under your rule under your understanding as a hebrew man because you have built yourself up to be a leader for the nation of israel so they can see a pattern of good works that's why it's important to find of a good wife or find of a wife okay of understanding of yahweh's righteousness but modern hebrew women are not going to have this understanding to be a good wife so that's why they don't become normally become wives they become baby mamas they become what side chicks these terms okay it's easy to find those type of women right but it's hard and challenging to find a wife with yahweh's understanding okay uh let's go to the next one it says ecclesiasticus chapter 25 verse 1 and ecclesiasticus is in, is is basically in the book of the apocrypha okay so or you can go by the book of sirach it's ecclesiasticus or the book of sirach chapter 25 verse 1 okay they got two different names okay uh it says in three things i was beautified and stood up beautiful both before elohim and men so these three things right when you stand before the most high you're going to be looking presentable to the most high yah and yahshua okay and also to the men of understanding of leadership qualities in the hebrew israelite faith it says the unity of brethren so that's the one key principle that you have to have unity of brethren okay that's going to be in the good eyesight of the most high yah and his son yahshua hamashiach 
Then it says the love of neighbors. So you have love for your people, right? The blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, right? You have love for the nation of Israel, meaning you you willing to uh, deliver the children of Israel this information on who they are, what they need to do to return to the Lord, and you showing good attributes by having a platform so they have so they can have access to the information so they can change their life. So you showing love to your neighbor, okay? And then it says number three it says a man and a wife that agree together you see that israel so a man and a wife it didn't say a man and a girlfriend it said a man and a wife that agree together so a wife has to agree with the husband because the man is the head or the husband is the head of that house these are the three things that is beautified or presented to the most high Yah with good order okay and structure but again, as you can see, modern Hebrew women of today, they don't agree with the Hebrew faith. Right? They don't agree with the Hebrew faith. So it's a constant conflict in the household. Okay? It's a constant conflict in the household. Okay? So, uh, let's go to the next verse. We're in the book of uh, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 19, verse 2. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 19, verse 2. It says, Wine and women will make men of understanding to fall away. So again, it says wine or quote unquote alcohol, right? Right? Alcohol and women will make men of understanding to fall away. Because most of the time men get drunk, intoxicated, and they get hooked up with the wrong type of woman. Off of lust or off of not having a clear head, a clear mind, right? But if the man was sober, he would actually have seen this woman is out of her mind. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, a lot of times you, you can't see clearly if you're drunk. You're going to be like, oh, man, this woman look good. She got it going on. But if you was a sober brother in the mind, you would have seen this sister wasn't all the way upstairs, meaning she didn't have intelligence of Yahweh's righteousness. She didn't have intelligence that it's not okay to sleep around. She did not have the intelligence. It's not okay to just, you know, mismanage your children. It's not okay to what? Depend on the government a hundred percent and the women don't have to do anything. These, this is the attributes that the, the men of today are lacking. Okay, because they have an alcohol involved and lust. Okay, let me read this again. Wine and women will make men of understanding to fall away. Yes, to fall in the way into sin. And it says, and he that cleaveth to harlots. Uh oh. It said, and he that cleaveth to harlots will become impudent. You see that, Israel? So again, when a man is simple minded, meaning he's drunk right go to the club turn up he's gonna what cleave to harlots he's gonna chase out the women that don't have his good intentions he's gonna get hooked up with the wrong type of women and now he's gonna be what trapped in the box because these women the harlots may have aids stds syphilis they may have these type of viruses going on okay but because you're drunk with wine you hebrew man you're gonna get caught off guard Oh, you know, these women may trap you just to get put on child support. Okay? All because you're not following Yahweh's word. Okay? And let's find out what the word impudent means. Okay? Let's find out the word impudent. It says impudent. Okay? It says rude and not showing respect, especially towards someone who is older or in a more important position. You see that Israel? It says rude and not showing respect. So that's basically what impudent means. Okay. And he that cleaveth to harlots will become impudent. You see this? And he that cleaveth to harlots will become impudent. So you're going to become what? A person that don't respect people. Okay. It says impudent rude and not showing respect especially towards someone who is older or in a more important position so again you're gonna lack a, a portion of respect for yourself you can become basically stupid a person that don't have common sense 
okay but now we go to it said cleaver to harless will become impudent okay that's what the bible says so you're not gonna have no respect for yourself because you're cleaving to harless who don't respect them own self harless do not respect their own selves that's why you're gonna be impudent because you're dealing with harlots because harlots don't respect themselves okay so you're going to become just like them you hebrew men so that's why it's better to what seek out the women that's after yahweh's righteousness point blank period okay so now we got that understanding with that so now we're going to go to number three uh about the modern hebrew women have hatred for hebrew men this is another understanding why the modern hebrew women have hatred for hebrew men okay it's because number three they like the pagan holiday traditions okay israel so a lot of times you're going to see a lot of modern hebrew women liking the pagan holiday traditions of the world you know when the hebrew men come into the truth they forsake uh the pagan holidays of the world but a lot of women are going to still hold on to that understanding as far as the pagan traditions on these pagan holidays okay so but again in general the women are following after the world worldly men because the men in general are the leaders so they have a portion of worldly men following those customs they're going to still seek after those men that's following the pagan tradition okay which of course the majority of the men in general are going to be following after uh pagan uh customs or pagan holidays so that's why these women have more to choose from than the hebrew men because it's not that many hebrew men in the truth like that but it's more men in the world that's following the customs of the world so that's why they're not gravitating to you hebrew brothers like that jeremiah chapter 44 verse 15 is going to be an example of the characteristics of the hebrew women back in ancient times that used to worship a, a pagan uh, a goddess over following yahweh's word but initially it was because the men in general was the ones at this time following after wickedness in general so that's why the women followed after the men that was doing the same thing but they the women wanted to do it on their own eventually in any or you know even without the men and it's going to prove it jeremiah chapter 44 verse 15 then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods because the hebrew men that went off into wickedness they knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods because these men at this time were weak men they that basically allowed their own wives to break yahweh's laws by worshiping other deities and it says and all the women that stood by a great multitude even all the people that dwelt in the land of egypt and pathros answered jeremiah saying so these particular men that went to live in egypt right with their wives right because that's what i people normally do they follow the ways after the other nations but we had a portion of hebrew men and hebrew women living in egypt at the time and it says they was living in the land of egypt in pathros so they was living in a, a, a city that was called pathros in egypt okay and they was worshiping idol gods in this land under the egyptians uh kingdom okay and jeremiah is basically telling them not to do it okay so we're going to go and jeremiah is a prophet okay he's trying to tell the hebrew men and hebrew women not to do these things of course okay jeremiah chapter 44 verse 16 as for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of yahweh we will not hearken unto thee so you had hebrew men and hebrew women that was living in egypt they did not want to listen to jeremiah the prophet's words on them stop worshiping these idol gods and worship yahweh of course they didn't want to hear the word of the most High from jeremiah the prophet okay so again the hebrew men and the hebrew women did not want to hearken unto jeremiah's words which of course was the most High yah's words speaking through jeremiah the prophet okay keep on going jeremiah chapter 44 verse 17 but we will certainly do whatsoever thing it's like but we will certainly do whatsoever thing go forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the queen of heaven because the queen of heaven had different titles in egypt so most people may say it was the uh the goddess isis right 
but again egypt had many different goddesses okay so jeremiah wrote down okay the queen of heaven because all go back to the same thing okay but just different name titles but egypt had a a goddess being referred to as the queen of heaven okay it says unto the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her as we have done we and our fathers our kings and our princes in the cities of judah and in the streets of jerusalem for then had we plenty of visuals and were well and saw no evil so again the children of israel that was living in egypt was boasting about their great success when they was what practicing wicked abomination practices so they was like saying hey we did this in jerusalem and also we're going to do this custom as far as worshiping a uh idol god or idol goddess right that was going against the laws of the most High. we're going to do it still in egypt okay and this is what the children of israel was doing back then similar to modern day christianity you know when you fast forward today modern day christianity our people even though the hebrew israelites are telling the children of israel in today's time stop breaking yahweh's laws come out them churches follow righteousness keep these commandments the children of israel still want to hold on to christianity okay because it's traditional right to go to these christian churches as a tradition but it's a tradition of men it's not the tradition of this bible okay um jeremiah chapter 44 verse 18 it says but since we left off to burn incense to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her we have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine so they're saying if they um when they stopped worshiping the idols they had bad times you know they was going through struggling and stuff like that when they stopped worshiping the idols but then when they started worshiping idols they trying to justify themselves saying hey we had good success which is a lie okay they did not have good success but again it's all a lie just like christianity they'll say since we've been involved with christianity christian faith the most i've been blessing us right but when you look in general as a nation of people we're struggling out here having hard times okay um let's go to the next verse basically history repeats itself okay you get the uh analogy understanding okay let's go to the next verse this is a book of jeremiah chapter 44 verse 19 and when we burn incense to the queen of heaven and poured out drink offerings unto her did we make her cakes to worship her and pour out drink offerings unto her without our men whoa 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 you see this israel so now the women are now saying we did all this we burned incense to the queen of heaven because this is the women talking now and poured out drink offerings unto her did we make her cakes to worship her so they the sisters even got together to make cakes or quote-unquote birthday cakes unto the goddess the queen of heaven and pour out drink offerings unto her so they had wine alcohol beverages and they poured you know they had a, like a like a party gathering to celebrate the queen of heaven and they did it without their men it said without our men so they the, the women didn't even do this thing normally with the men it was mainly the women pushing this notion to worship the goddess of heaven okay or the or the uh queen of heavens scenario they did it without the men as well okay so it's kind of like a boastful arrogant spirit at this time that the hebrew sisters had and this is what the hebrew sisters are doing today when they do uh these pagan customs like mother's day mother's day is another form of worshiping the queen of heaven scenario but just under different titles different deities okay jeremiah chapter 44 verse 20 then jeremiah said unto all the people to the men and to the women and to all the people which had given him that answer saying so jeremiah now is going to answer these particular people that had words to say against him jeremiah 44 verse 21 jeremiah chapter 44 verse 21 the incense that ye burn in the cities of judah and in the streets of jerusalem 
ye and your fathers, your kings and princess, and the people of the land, did not Yahweh remember them, and came it not into his mind? So Jeremiah is trying to relate it back to the children of Israel who were in Egypt, right? The, the men and women of our nation to tell them, hey, Yahweh seen all these things that you did in the land of Jerusalem at the time and also in the land that you're dwelling at in Egypt. He sees all these things. That's basically what Jeremiah is saying. Okay. Jeremiah chapter 44 verse 20. I mean, it's like Jeremiah chapter 44 verse 22. So that Yahweh could no longer bear because of the evil of your doings and because of the abominations which ye have committed. Therefore is your land a desolation and an astonishment and a curse and a curse without an inhabitant as at this day you see that without an inhabitant as at this day so yahweh punished of course the children of israel okay that's why they mainly wasn't in Jer jerusalem at this time like that because they got punished okay they got punished to uh, basically go into captivity under the babylonian empire okay and most of them were scattered in egypt and so forth and other countries too as well but you had a remnant of our people that was in egypt following the egyptian customs okay but again the punishment was uh captivity by the babylonian empire okay but they was boasting like oh we did this in jerusalem and all this other stuff but guess what jerusalem became an astonishment <laughs> that's what it said therefore in this is like it. that's what it says therefore is your land a desolation it's not the same place no more okay and it says an astonishment and a curse a curse because it's not a it's a curse it's basically a curse when you're not dwelling in your homeland practicing your own laws and customs that's a curse okay that's what it says without an inhabitant as at this day because there was no laws no order set up in jerusalem at this time because of the punishment of the children of Israel by them uh, forsaking the Lord by worshiping the queen of heaven. And that's mainly when you fast forward today, the modern Hebrew women of today are practicing primarily pagan holiday traditions. And then when they find out the Hebrew men of today, that's in the truth, they, are, they, are, they don't, if they're not following the ways of the, the world as far as following the pagan traditions, then the modern Hebrew women are going to have hatred towards their Hebrew brother because the Hebrew brother is not keeping the customs of the pagans. They're not keeping the customs of America as far as these pagan holidays. So the connection is not going to be there because the women of the world who are the modern Hebrew women of the world of today, they follow pagan holiday traditions. The Hebrew men, the black, Hispanic, Native American men that's in the Hebrew truth, they don't follow those traditions. So they're not going to be basically desirable to the modern Hebrew women of today.